two of the best things, in my opinion, pretzels and hot dogs, smashed together into a pretzel dog. Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel. I'm Izzy and I like to cook. So I'm gonna do exactly that today. I'm gonna show you step by step how to make pretzel dogs. It's a pretzel wrapped around a hot dog. What's better than that? Dip your pretzel dog in some gooey queso. Chef's kiss. So we're gonna make the pretzel dogs and we're also going to make homemade queso to go with them. I need to make the dough and let it rise for an hour. So let's get started. First things first, we have to activate the yeast. I'm using Fleischmann's Bread Machine Instant Yeast. It's rapid rise yeast. I keep it in the fridge. You could also use those individual packets. They work great if you don't bake a lot. So I've got a half cup of warm water here. Then I'm adding about two tablespoons of brown sugar and two and one fourth teaspoons of yeast. And I usually don't measure things when I cook, but when it comes to baking, always measure. I'm gonna give this a light stir. Let your yeast activate for at least five minutes. It will start to foam, and if it doesn't start to foam, you know that your yeast is no good and you probably need to restart with some different yeast. It's happened to me before. While my yeast is coming to life, I'm going to melt a stick of butter in the microwave. My butter is melted. It comes out to about a half a cup of butter. And now I'm going to add one cup of beer on top. You don't have to use beer. You can use sparkling water as well. It just has to be fizzy, bubbly. That seems about right. My yeast is nice and foamy. I'm going to add this on top. And then we're also going to add four and a half cups of flour. I usually scoop my flour into the cup like this because if you dip the measuring cup in the flour, it packs the flour down too much and then you typically end up using too much flour. And then whatever you're baking is dense. Okay. I have to top off my flour. I'm just using all-purpose flour for my pretzels. My four and a half cups of flour are in here. I'm just going to add some salt. And I'm attaching my dough hook to my KitchenAid. Lock it in and we're going to start slow. I'm going to let this do its thing for about three to four minutes. And you know it's ready when it starts peeling off the walls of the bowl pretty clean. If it's sticking to the walls, add a little bit more flour. And that's just how I do it. That's what we want right there. All right, we're going to unlock it. And that's what we want right there. You want the sides of the bowl to be completely clean of the dough. All right, now our dough is kneaded and I'm going to lightly oil a bowl using avocado oil, but you can use any neutral oil, just a light coating. So get your dough, form it into a little ball like this, place it in the bowl. I spray a little bit more oil on top, cover the dough with a clean kitchen towel. You want to place your dough in a warm place for an hour so that it can rise. I usually just place it in the oven with the oven turned off. And your dough should double in size, so we'll see you in an hour. While my dough is rising, I'm going to go do my makeup because it's Friday and I think we're going to go out for dinner tonight. Hello, welcome to my bathroom. I'm just going to do my natural everyday kind of makeup look. I just got the bonus size of this stuff. This is the Kinship Self Reflect. It's literally just a sunscreen, but this is what I use as my foundation, I guess. I already did some skincare right after I got out of the shower, and now I'm gonna go in with this. I've been using this for well over a year, and it, it's just my favorite sunscreen, it's great. My skin has been breaking out lately. I think it's because the season is changing drastically right now in South Carolina and allergies are really hitting. Weather is so back and forth. It's like that time of year when the weather can't decide if it wants to be cold or if it wants to be hot. I feel like that just messes with everybody's like skin and immune system and all that. So hopefully more warm days are ahead because I'm so ready for summer. See how nice and glowy that makes my skin? I'm obsessed. So then sometimes I'll go in with a concealer. If I want a little bit more coverage, I use the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer is in Fair Beige. Or if I just need like a dewy, like brightening under my eye, um, I'll use the Glossier Stretch Concealer. This is G10. I think I'm gonna go with the e.l.f. just to have a little bit more coverage. 
I am and forever will be a beauty blender girl. I've tried to use different brushes to blend out my concealer. I just feel like it always comes out streaky and just doesn't look that good. Um, so I do use beauty blenders, but I swap it out very often. That's the biggest key to using a beauty blender is they just hold bacteria so you can't have it for too, too long. I have a couple different cream blushes that I like to use, but this Rare Beauty and Happy is just so good. I just blend her out. I like to use a dewy setting spray after I put my cream products on. I just feel like it helps melt everything together. So I'm using this Dewy Coconut Setting Mist by e.l.f. Let it dry. Then I go in with a powder bronzer. This is Lawless Matte Bronzer in Golden Hour. I've had this for a while. I honestly don't even know if they still are making it, but it's a good one. I don't typically go hard with bronzer. Um, I just like it to make it look like I've got a little bit of sun, even though I literally hide my face from the sun as much as possible. And then I use my favorite powder blush. It's the Milani Dulce Pink, the baked powder blush. It's like a highlighter and blush in one. And it's a, it's pretty bright pink, but on my skin tone, like same with the Rare Beauty Happy, that like bright pink, I feel like it just complements my skin tone really nicely. So I take this on my high cheekbones and then I take it on my lids. People are always asking me what um, eyeshadow I use and it's literally this. Now my skin is pretty much done. I'm gonna go in with this Thrive Cosmetics Eye Brightener in Miko. It's like a nice, pale pink color, but it's really shimmery. I like to take it on the inner corner. I'm not a nose contour kind of girl. I really don't understand it, or maybe it's just the shape nose that I have, but every single time that I try to do a nose contour, it just doesn't look good. So we just do a little eye brightener and then we call it a day. And the last thing I do is brows and eyelashes. We'll go for brows first. Before I do anything to my brows, I take a spoolie and just get all, all of that makeup off that I just brushed all over my face. Because if I don't, then I will have clumps in my brows. So we do that, we just clean them up a little bit. And I just use a clear brow gel. This is Control Freak by NYX. And I just like when they're, you know, stiff. They're not wiry and crazy because that happens pretty easily with my eyebrows. Feather them up a little bit and then shape them so that they stay in place all day. I like this um, Control Freak. I've tried a couple other clear brow gels and they're either like too thick and sticky or they don't do anything. Um, so this is, I think this is like $5. It's really cheap um, and it works good. Last but not least, mascara. And I truly feel like mascara is the one ingredient that pulls everything together. I like to use brown mascara. This is a Thrive Cosmetics. The color is called Crystal. I just feel like black mascara is too intense for my face and especially for natural makeup days. I love this stuff. I've been using this mascara for years. When I'm buying a mascara, it has to be a tubing mascara because when I wash my face, I want it to come off in clumps. Like I don't want it to stick to my eyelashes. Like I want it to just come off. I can't stand when I get like the mascara bags under my eyes. I don't want that. I just want it to come right off in clumps. Give it one last spray. Always gotta put something on the lips. I have so many different lip products that I use, but I really love this House Labs lip oil in hue it is the cutest shade and it also keeps your lips really hydrated without feeling sticky it's one of my faves right now okay Ooh. i'm gonna take murray for a walk and by the time i get back the dough should be ready I'm back and our dough has doubled in size and that's exactly what we wanna see. Oven heating up to 425 and I have some a big pot of water coming to a boil on the stove. Add some flour to the surface that you'll be rolling on. It's perfect. I'm gonna cut my dough into 10 equal pieces. And I've got six hot dogs, so we're gonna use six of these pieces. We'll put the rest of this dough to the side. Let's cut open our hot dogs. You wanna make sure you dry off your hot dogs really well. I'm gonna sprinkle some flour on top of the hot dogs just to help the dough stick. All right now, I'm just gonna stretch out one of these pieces of dough, then get a hot dog and wrap the dough around the hot dog, tucking in the top part. 
and then wrap. You wanna make sure that you tuck in the other end of the dough until it looks like this. I'm gonna start boiling the pretzel dogs. Really quick before I start boiling these, I'm gonna make an egg wash. So I just have some water and I'm gonna crack one egg. This is gonna be brushed on the pretzels after they're done being boiled. That's what makes the pretzels really shiny on the outside. Ooh, whisk this up really quickly and then just keep it off to the side until you're ready to brush your pretzels. I'm gonna add some baking soda to this boiling water. Then boil your pretzel dogs for about 30 seconds. After about 30 seconds, scoop your pretzel dogs out with a slotted spoon and then put them on something to dry. Now I'm going to transfer my pretzel dogs to a baking sheet. Brush them with the egg wash all over the surface. So make sure you get a good coating on there. Now I'm going to cover them generously with coarse kosher salt. Going into the oven at 425 for 10 to 15 minutes. While the pretzels are baking, I'm going to make some queso. I'm going to make it in the crock pot, but you can also make it in the microwave. I've got eight ounces of American cheese. I'm adding a fourth of a cup of water and I'm adding about the same of whole milk, maybe a little bit more. I'm gonna turn this on a while. I'm adding mild green chilies. Maybe half of this. Yeah, I used like half of this can. And then I'm also using my homemade pickled jalapenos. So I'm just gonna take a big scoop of these and we're just gonna give them a light chop. I have been obsessed with pickled jalapenos lately. Also adding some cumin, like that much. I'm gonna add a splash of the pickle brine as well. Oh, that got everywhere. That's enough of that. I'm gonna cover this and let it do its thing for like 20 minutes, give it a good stir and see where we're at. The pretzel dogs are done and they look phenomenal. These came out really good. All right. Which one do we think is the prettiest? I think it's probably this one. That one's pretty, pretty cute. I should have started the queso earlier because now I'm too impatient to wait for this to be done. Um, so I'm just gonna try the first one with some mustard. This is just spicy brown mustard. Mm. Yum. Mm. It's much later and I'm just trying the queso now. It was a little bit liquidy, so I actually added some ricotta cheese. It's kind of weird, but but I added some ricotta cheese to thicken it up a little bit and it's actually really good. I hope that everybody loved this video just as much as I loved making it. If you did, please consider subscribing, liking, commenting, interacting. Any and all support is greatly appreciated, and hopefully I will see you in the next one. Bye, guys.